Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here. In today's video, we're gonna discover if power goes from the speed control while we apply the brakes and makes its way back to the battery pack. This is called regenerative braking. We're gonna discover if this is actually occurring within our hobby grade speed controls. Now the setup that we're gonna use for today is going to be very similar to the setup we used in the previous video. There's only gonna be an additional two components added for us to come to a conclusion. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add an ammeter using a multimeter. We're gonna measure the current from the battery pack to the speed control. Then we're also gonna add another multimeter to measure the voltage across that battery pack. Those are the two components we're gonna add. Everything else is going to be the same. We're still gonna have two receivers, two motors, two speed controls, and two batteries being used. And the motors are going to be connected through that transmission so that we can have one applying the power and one applying the braking action. Now let's go ahead and fire up that motor. All right, we just saw power going from our battery pack to the speed control. And then as soon as we apply the brakes on that system, we saw the current ended up changing. We know it changed because the sign in front of the current value ended up changing. And that tells us that power is in fact making its way back to the battery pack. This is exactly what regenerative braking is all about. Now for 500 of you that ended up seeing the video that was posted last week, I ended up saying that this is not happening. What I originally thought is that power is just leaking past the speed control and making its way to the pack. The problem is with that is that it doesn't matter whether it's just 1% of the power, half a percent of the power, 20% of the power, or all of the power. All of these values is regenerative braking. If only 1% of the power makes its way back to the battery pack, that is still power that we can use later, which is definitely regenerative braking. Seeing the power being delivered from our speed control as we apply the brakes 
back into that battery pack was awesome to see. I've never seen this before. In fact, in the last video, what I saw was the lights of the speed control as well as my receiver were lit up and I didn't even apply any sort of battery. I didn't have any battery connected there. I simply just spun up the motor. I was not applying brakes and the lights on the speed control as well as the receiver for the braking side of the system were turning on. That is definitely showing that power is being produced. Now one of the things that we want to do is calculate exactly how much power is making its way back to that battery pack. The interesting part is if you saw, if I just press the brakes a small amount, we are getting the maximum amount of braking action turning itself into power that can be pushed back to that battery pack. The interesting part is that we applied a very small amount of braking action on our transmitter and we got the maximum amount of current being pushed back into our battery pack. As we applied more more and more brakes, this value actually started to drop. It dropped quite significantly, even though we had more braking action happening. In other words, we would be able to stop our vehicle quicker as we are absorbing a lot more energy applying that 100% brake on our transmitter. Let's take a rough look at how efficient and effective this system was for delivering power back into our battery pack at that partial brake position as well as that full brake position. The image here on the top left of our screen is where we apply the brakes at 100% and in the center at the bottom is where we apply the brakes at a partial percentage. Now all of the meters that you see here in the two images we have recorded the data so that we can figure out what the overall efficiency is when we apply the brakes either at 100% or a partial percentage. If we look at our first brake setting, we're gonna take the voltage as well as the current that is being generated to go back into the battery. Our battery voltage is at 15.27 and the current going back into the battery is at 0.965 amps. This brings our total charging wattage to 14.7 watts. Now if we look at the bottom for our partial brake position, we have a voltage of 15.28 and we also have a current of 1.233 amps. This brings our total charging wattage at 18.8 watts. Now already you can see that we're getting a higher charging wattage from when we apply the brakes at a partial position. That is already quite interesting. Now if we take these values and we break it down into our regeneration efficiency, we'll see exactly what we get from that. When we look at 100% brake, we would expect the highest amount of wattage being consumed. In this case, our drive motor is at 162.1 watts, where at a partial brake setting, this makes sense. We have less wattage because we have less braking happening. This occurs at 127.9 watts. Now, what we must do is subtract out the no load wattage that we measured at the very beginning of the video. This is going to leave us with 92.1 watts at 100% brake position and only 57.9 watts of braking power or strength at a partial brake position. If we go and look at the regeneration efficiency, this is looking at how many watts we get out of the charging circuit here and dividing it by the total amount of brake watts that we are generating. If we look at our 100% brake position setting, we're getting 16% regeneration efficiency. This tells you that out of the 92.1 watts of braking power that we're generating, we're only putting 16% of that back into the battery. Now when we look at the partial brake setting, we take the higher wattage here, the 18.8 .8 watts versus our 14.7 that we get under 100%, we divide the 18.8 .8 by the 57.9 watts that we get when we are using partial brakes. This brings us to a total regeneration efficiency of 33%. Here we can see that partial brake setting actually increases the efficiency of regeneration by about double. That is quite interesting to see, and I'm sure if you use different brake settings on the electronic speed control, as well as even different positions of brake on the transmitter, you would generate different results here. And it could also be different for all the different and varying electronic speed controls that they have out there on the market. 
Now the big question is, how do we take that rotational energy of our brushless motor and convert that energy to power that can be delivered back to our battery pack? Well, very similar to what we talked about in the previous video, it all comes down to how that braking circuit functions. What we know from our previous video is that the speed control essentially creates a short of the brushless motor windings in order to produce that braking action for us. But in order to deliver the power back into the speed control, into the battery pack, there has to be a little bit more that's going on. Now what's happening is, as that motor is rotating, it creates a specific voltage, and that's known to us as the back EMF. However, as soon as the brakes are applied, the FETs turn on and switch so that they short out that winding. When that happens, you essentially get an approaching zero voltage within that winding. And because we had significant voltage and then we we're reducing that down to almost nothing, we end up getting a surge of current in that particular winding. What happens next is essentially where all of the magic happens. That FET on the speed control opens up the circuit again so that current cannot flow. And that's a problem because the motor windings acts as an inductor and inductors do not like changes of current. If we have a significant amount of current flow and then we go and open the circuit so that we get no current flow, that is a significant change. And because inductors don't like that, we get a voltage produced out of it. We get the surge of now voltage. Now in simplistic terms, that surge in voltage is exactly what allows the power to go from our motor back into the battery pack. Well guys, I hope you were able to learn something much like I was able to learn something in this video. Like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.